Shinsuke Nakamura would attack Ricochet tonight. Now, people think that's a hill move, but Ricochet literally did hit him first, right? But nonetheless, during this segment, Twitter went crazy because Shinsuke Nakamura would hit a version of a GTS. Obviously, a tease for CM Punk, or a tease for Kenta, or a tease for Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle did the bro to sleep. It's possible. But no, we did a video literally yesterday talking about this. I think WWE are just doing these spots just so we keep talking about the possibility of CM Punk coming back to WWE. Mainly because I think he's coming back to WWE. This is Things You Might Have Missed for WWE Raw. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. The new tag team champions Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso were on Raw tonight. Have to mention... The title belts on Cody look like they were custom made for him. That looks so cool, doesn't it? However, we can now say Michael Cole asks the most hard-hitting questions in the entire wrestling journalism world. Because he was going hard on Cody. Sammy and Kevin would come out, say they want a shot at the tag team titles. Yes, WWE did play the wrong theme song for Sami Zayn. Apparently, they played his Hill theme song due to a production botch. But the match was set for the main event of Raw. The match was breaking down in the first half. Of course, Kevin Owens, his distaste for Jey Uso on plain sight tonight. For those wondering, WWE did play the correct theme song when Sami Zayn came out for the main event. We'd see Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso work perfectly as a team for Jey Uso to pin Kevin Owens to retain the tag team championships tonight. The commentary did call this the Cody 1D. Please start calling it just the code E. Code E, get it? Code E. It makes perfect sense. Come on, WWE. The end of Raw would see Kevin Owens finally shake the hand of Jey Uso. I mean, they're setting up war games perfectly, aren't they? So Seth Rollins got me really good tonight. I thought for a minute he was about to retire or something. Seth come out to the ring, talked about the broken back. Obviously, the last man standing match at Fastlane. And then it looked like he was about to retire, relinquish the championship. But then luckily for us, Seth would say, I'm just getting started. I really love the fact that Seth come out tonight wearing a jacket that matches the backdrop of the Fastlane stage logo and everything. And I thought that was a nice touch because he was in the main event of Fastlane and he was the victor. Pretty cool. Drew McIntyre would come out. I know a lot of people are going to be happy about this. Drew would look Seth square in the face and say, I want to match with you, Seth, at Crown Jewel. I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to party, but I want that match. And Seth Rollins would accept it. Drew versus Seth at Crown Jewel. I'm all here for that. I think this is going to be a good match. I don't know if Drew's going to win. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Damian Priest would then start to cash in on Seth, but Dirty Dom try to deliver the briefcase. Drew McIntyre would take it and throw it back up the stage. Pretty good thing because Seth was pretty much recovered at that point and he stood tall. So probably not the best time to cash in, but we would see Drew and Seth backstage. The match is official for Crown Jewel and Drew basically said, I'm not there to help you. I'm there for my best interest. And if it doesn't involve me, I'm not getting involved. Pretty big words from Drew McIntyre. Nia Jax's hole was clearly on display on Raw tonight. No, not that hole, you dirty-minded sickos. The hole in her wrestling attire. But nonetheless, she had a match with Raquel Rodriguez. Great for Raquel. But the match did end in a DQ when Rhea Ripley would come out, followed by Shayna Baszler. Shayna would stand tall tonight. They're definitely setting up a fatal four-way again, aren't they? You may have also noticed this on the front of Nia Jax's attire. If you look at the black part, you can see what looks like a face. Honestly, Twitter sort of had some fun with this because it looks like someone's gone face first into her attire and just left a makeup impression. <laughs> That's pretty funny, isn't it? <laughs> Ivar would defeat Kofi Kingston in the first match of Raw tonight. It was Viking rules. We saw the return of Valhalla. Some new paint for Valhalla, especially down her leg, looked really cool. Worth noting, they didn't have the Viking ship that they normally have. You know, that big thing that sort of sits on the entrance way side of the ring? Wasn't there tonight. The shields were. And I don't know if you caught this. They had one lone shield on that side of the ring. And they was obviously going to do a spot with it. 
It fell. No one touched it. Luckily, it fell into a position where they could still use it, but they just improvised and went with it. That's class. You know, sometimes things like that can throw off superstars. It didn't throw off Ivar or Kofi. So apparently WWE is considering bringing back Bray Wyatt's Firefly Funhouse along with the Uncle Howdy character. We did do a video on this yesterday if you want further details, but very interesting to say the least. Big Bronson Reed would get a huge win tonight in a triple threat match against Ricochet and Chad Gable. Next week, we'll now get Bronson Reed challenging for the Intercontinental title against Gunther. Oh my God. That match is going to be two big meaty men slapping meat. Whatever you do, do not forget, tomorrow night is practically WrestleMania NXT. Major stars are heading there, including Cody Rhodes with a major announcement. And for the first time ever, you can see John Cena in the corner of Carmelo Hayes. And of course, the return of the dead man, The Undertaker, arrives in NXT tomorrow night. The first 30 minutes are also commercial free. Talking of NXT tonight, Becky Lynch defended the NXT Women's Championship finally against Tegan Knox. This was a great show in for Knox. This was a pretty long match for WWE standards and it was good. She kept countering to disarm her until Becky Lynch finally locked it in and won the match. After the match, they would shake hands, showing respect, putting Tegan over but it looks like WWE already has Tegan's next story covered. It looks like she may be teaming with Natalia. So JD really screwed up for the Judgment Day at Money in the Bank by kind of hitting Damian Priest in the leg. Tonight he had to face Drew McIntyre, which Drew won. Rhea didn't seem too happy about it, but she had an idea. And minutes later, we would see them in the background. We'd see Rhea Ripley talking to Drew McIntyre. Is Drew about to join the Judgment Day? We've talked about this possible heel turn. We've talked about all that. There's been a lot of fan theory about Drew joining the Judgment Day. Maybe it's not just theory. We'd later see Drew approach Jay Uso. And you've got to wonder here, with Drew still not trusting Jay like Kevin Owens a little bit, I wonder if this is the catalyst of why Drew joins the Judgment Day, even if it's just maybe to be on Team Judgment Day for war games, to be on the opposite side than Jey Uso. DIY are finally back together. And well, they was attacked backstage during an interview with Wade Barrett by Imperium tonight. And I've got something to cheer you up, though. If you go to Johnny Gargano's Twitter, well, Gargano has brought back the glorious bomb. You love to see it. We had a promo package tonight for Ludwig Kaiser. This was absolutely brilliant, except maybe some of the use of the AI. But nonetheless, this was a brilliant presentation for Ludwig Kaiser. An over-exaggeration of his character done perfectly. Gotta wonder now, is a singles push coming in Ludwig Kaiser's future? Very fun show tonight. Eight out of ten from me. All hype, obviously, tomorrow for NXT WrestleMania, baby. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. You'll never miss another upload. Like the video, share the video, and I'll catch you as always next time. Peace!